Hello, everybody. It's Tab. I'm here to tell you this episode is going to be fun and fantastic because we'll be meeting with my oldest and dearest friend who is going to teach us about emotional freedom technique as well as how to get some new resources for yourself and internal resources. So if you're interested in knowing about EFT and what internal resources are, don't miss this episode. Hey, welcome back everyone to the CPTSD podcast. This is episode eight. If you have been listening this far, thanks for sticking with us. If this is your very first episode, we uh, are glad you're here and welcome. We have been receiving some requests for particular types of episodes or subjects to talk about too that have been requested that are on their way, are religious or cult abuse and how that how that can create complex post-traumatic stress, um, as well as dealing with a chronically ill caregiver and how in the absence of physical, emotional, or psychological abuse can having a sick caregiver also cause PTSD and CPTSD symptoms in later life. So you don't wanna miss those. We'll be letting you know, of course, as those episodes come up. And we've also noticed that you guys are showing up on the YouTube channel. Today would be an especially important day to watch this versus just listen or do both because you're going to get a chance to watch an EFT trained coach talk you through resourcing and you'll be able to get to see that happening besides just having three very passionate and excited helping professionals having what usually tends to be a pretty exciting conversation is how we normally roll. Uh, we haven't introduced anyone or talked about the topic for today, and I'm going to turn that over to Tabitha. We're really looking forward to this episode. Thank you. I would like to welcome our guest today, Krista Dawson. She is an EFT trained and certified coach, and she is going to talk with us today about what EFT is, where the acupressure points are that you'll be using, which is why you may want to watch the video as well. And also internal resourcing is a passion for Krista as well as Beth and I. And so we'd really like to deep dive into that and let you know what it is and how you can get you some. So I would really like to let you all know that Krista is literally besides family members, my longest friend, she and I met in the fourth grade at a family camp. I don't know what you remember, Krista, but I remember our first conversation being fourth grade level discussion about the ethics of using whale fat and lipstick and (laughs) other things that we should be caring about on the planet. Um, If you have any memories, feel free to share. I just wanted to let people know that I've known you a really long time and we've always cared about others, the environment and how we can participate in that. Welcome, Krista. Thank you. Um, And yes, my memory, although the details are cloudy, what I do remember from that exchange was a deep connection made at a very young age that has stayed with us throughout our lifetimes. So it's really, really exciting for me to be sharing this with you and for us to be on this path together of our own healing and helping others heal themselves. So thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. Well, our pleasure, I'm sure. So I'm thinking, um, Krista, that one thing that might be important for our um, listeners to know is what's the difference between just tapping and somebody who is EFT certified? Because it's quite a process that you need to go through. And I think it's an important one. Could you let us know just a little bit about what that was like for you? Um. I was actually one of the first groups to come through uh, EFT Universe, founded by Dawson Church. Um, It took me about three years to get through the program, and not because it's super, I mean, it's definitely an, an investment of time, and don't get me wrong, but I also was going through my own healing process as I was going through this Uh, certification. So being trained in how to, well, first of all, learning to understand about brains, bodies, 
how the brain encodes memory, how the body encodes memory, the importance of not just using the cognition or the brain to process, you know, trauma, traumatic events, any kind of experience really, that this is a mind body thing. And so there's a whole process of education in learning about all of these things, um, as well as the ethics. <laughs> You know what? What are what is the scope of my practice? Um, learning how to not re-traumatize people, learning how to dial it back, learning how to gently move into traumatic events, learning how and when it's appropriate to just help person practice resourcing. So all of that was part of the training. Um, and again, I would say that a large portion of that was just me healing myself. So I was better prepared to be in my body, hold space for people as I taught them this tool and guided them through their process. Thank you for that clarification. And um, I would love to hear from you, Beth, what you think, but I am so grateful that you went through the time to heal your own, because if we don't do that, then we're in our own reactive states when we're working with other people. So I'm really glad to hear that. Beth, do you have any ideas that you want to chime in with there? Thanks for asking, Tab. Yeah, I love, um, I just love the, the, the disclosure that everybody needs healing, you know? So I, what I, I'm hoping that we're moving away from in the field of mental health or, or healing or coaching is that there's an expert who knows everything. And then there is the, the recipient of the healing who uh, is coming from some sort of deficit. It's always been my impression that you can't really take someone to a place that you haven't been mm -hmm. a yourself and B then came out on the other side. So I can't help someone build a bridge. if I don't know anything about how to build a bridge. And I also can't walk through the dark night of the soul with someone if I didn't, if I had never gone through that myself. So when we are afraid of our own depth, and then we're expecting ourselves to be able to show up and walk someone else through their own depth. Um, I, I don't think it's, yeah, I just don't, you nailed it. I don't think it's as, as thorough and as transformational as it can be, but there's a, there's a, a humility that comes with being a helping professional and, and admitting that you've got your own stuff. Like everybody's got their own stuff. Krista, I know you wanted to say something. Oh, just not being afraid to acknowledge your mistakes. That is part of what cultivates compassion, relatability. You know, I, yeah, it's huge, huge. Keeps you humble. <laughs> People well, appreciate I, that. <laughs> they sure do. And I really appreciate that Dolphin Church took the time to put that into his curriculum because not all EFT curriculums are made the same. So, mm -hmm. so far, what I'm hearing our recommendations for listeners would be is number one, find somebody certified and mm -hmm. if possible, find out how and where they got their certification and what that means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. So Krista, are you ready to dive right into what EFT is and how it works? Absolutely. All right. I'm going to run with that. Okay. So, um, wow. EFT life-changing, game-changing experience. Um, just a little bit about my story. Um, I had been in a fairly long struggle with uh, Hashimoto's. It's an autoimmune disorder effect, you know, affecting the thyroid, which took me from being a very active, fit person to couch surfing, really struggling, really struggling for a long time. I'd been working with a great uh, doctor and um, you know we had we tried all the things we were working so hard at ad addressing deficiencies ad addressing um, trying to get medication adjusted and I had been in a struggle for quite a while specifically with getting a particular medication on board that I really needed to get on board to regulate my thyroid levels. And when I would take this particular uh, layer of medication, I would feel over medicated to the point where I just couldn't stand it. I was climbing out of my own skin. 
And I had come across EFT <clears throat> from a friend. And I, from that friend, um, I had seen, matter of fact, I had seen UTAB um, liking the tapping solution in Nick Ortner on Facebook. And so I had liked them too. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was cool <laughs> and Tabby liked it. And that was all that was, that was all that mattered to me. Um, and I started seeing tapping for autoimmune come through my screen. Anyway, um, I had just had a really hard appointment with my doc. She's like, we have got to get these levels up. You have got to get this medication on board. And I was like, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try. And so two days into the, the medication levels being brought up and I'm already, my heart is racing. My head feels like it's going to explode and I'm scrolling away on Facebook and um, tapping, tapping for autoimmune rolled up on my screen. I'm like, what the heck, what have I got to lose? And so I opened it up and I did it. Um, there was a very quick tutorial on the points. And then I listened to a guided tapping meditation between Jessica Ortner and a, a physician. And I tapped and I cried and I tapped and I cried. Um, even though I feel like my body is betraying me and no one understands how I feel. And I cried and I tapped and I cried and I tapped and I cried and I tapped. And at the end of that 20 minute tapping meditation, the symptoms were gone completely. Months later, I learned, you know, and in that moment, I was like, what just happened? This, this, what just happened? I need more of this. Several months later, I was a four day, at a four day workshop with Dawson Church right after he lost his home in the, the fire, if you guys remember back in, let's see, what, 2017. Anyway, um, at a four day workshop, there were professionals there, there was an um, endocrinologist there, and we got to dialoguing. I, and up to that point, I had no idea why that worked. I, I didn't understand the correlation between the EFT and the medication. And I was approached by this uh, endocrinologist and he shared, I asked, I said, you know, I told him my story, what I just told you. And I said, I don't know what happened. He said, I can tell you what happened. I said, cool. <laughs> um, and essentially he shared that the medication that I was taking was going directly to the limbic brain. And it, my limbic brain was already overstimulated and it could not have, it couldn't handle anymore. And so by literally soothing that limbic brain, the emotional brain, the limbic brain, the part of your brain that stores your memory, the emotional, the mo the emotional brain. Um, I soothed that and I was able to bring on the medication. That was the beginning of a long road to healing. <laughs> so I am very passionate about EFT. EFT is a combination of exposure therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, coupled with the stimulation of acupressure points. Um, and I don't know if you want me to go into the basic recipe right now, or if you want me to just do a brief summary of it, brief summary. I actually am ready for the basic recipe. I can't recipe. hear you. Can, I, oh, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I think that it might be good to go through the whole basic recipe because okay. then people will know what they're looking for. And Perfect. there's a component that nine gamut piece is crucial and not all tapping includes that. Yeah, Beth, what do you want to put in there? I know you both know what EFT stands for, and I do too, awesome. but I haven't heard anybody define it for someone who doesn't. So what is Thank what do those letters stand for? Thank you. Hit it, Krista. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, emotional freedom technique, EFT, or tapping is another uh, state or a name used to define tapping. So um, again, it's a it, it's a combination of exposure therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, coupled with the, expo the um, uh, acupressure on the heads of nine Chinese meridians. And so what's literally happening when we're tapping on these points is that we are literally manually soothing the fight flight mechanism in your brain. We're literally soothing the amygdala, the limbic brain. And so when we are addressing a troubling memory 
um, something you're dealing with presently, maybe something from the past, something in the future that you're worried about, when you're addressing that through your exposure therapy, even though I feel overwhelmed, okay, um, the, and this is an important piece of this, your brain cannot tell the difference between the memory of an event and the actual event. And so now you are recalling whether it's a troubling memory or something that's bothering you today, your brain is wiring and firing in all the ways that it would if you were actually in the experience. Um, but now we're meeting that brain with a signal that's calming. Oh, there isn't a tiger in the bushes. I'm okay. I'm safe. So we're inviting the body or we're cueing the mind with the body. We've always heard the body follows the mind. Well, dear friends, it is an axiom. The mind follows the body. And so we're using the body to help soothe the brain. <laughs> and so you're revisiting that experience or whatever is bothering you. And you are now counter conditioning. You're, you're, you're making space to experience it through a different lens. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And we've talked about okay. that before. I mean, that's the process. I can't hear you. Again. There we go. Hmm. Can you hear me now? Okay. I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I'm not sure what that delay is. So I'll try and give a little gap ahead of time. Um, yeah. We've talked about that before here, and we'll continue to talk about it because Beth and I feel like it is one of the crucial components to actual healing from CPTSD. Yeah. So I'm yes. glad you're bringing it up again. Beth, do you have anything you want to ask or say before we move forward? I'm just delighted to hear one more person say the mind follows the body and not the other way that we are, um, we, we lightweight drop this idea of cultural historical trauma into our podcast somewhat often. And if you think about like 6,000 years of patriarchy and like white supremacy and this idea that the Western mind is the only tool in our toolbox. It is all that matters. It is. And then the rest of our, our, of us is like a skin suit and the propeller of your brain because your brain is all. And so to hear just more and more people say, it's actually your body that if you can heal your body, soothe your nervous system, which is going all throughout your body, not just in your brain, then you can heal your life you can heal, um, you can heal yourself. Absolutely. That, that is a missing piece in our Western, um, medicine, how we treat the, how we treat the body. We're completely missing a very integral part of the process of healing. Absolutely. Um, so it's the part uh, I just want to say, it's the part that can make us whole. Yes. Right. Because otherwise we remain divided. And yes. so by putting these things together, you can start to have that internal sense of wholeness and of being alive and real and your own self. Yes, Beth. Yeah. Well, one of the things that the, the, it looks like a hamburger to me, but the little, the sandwich, the EFT sandwich but one of the things that it says is to make your brain your best friend. And I was, I like was clutching my pearls when I read that, like, oh, yes, because if we're, um, you know, so if you have a, a chronic illness and I'm, I would be really interested to talk about long COVID somewhere in this, this 45 minutes to an hour as well. If you're feeling like your body is betraying you, that's a deeply rooted core belief that is like messing with your immune system. Or if you feel like your brain is your worst enemy, Pete Walker in his book, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving, uses the turn of phrase, your inner critic. I don't know if that is like powerful enough to describe the pure venom that folks with, um, that people who have complex post-traumatic stress, often their internal monologue sounds like, that it's just so vicious. And so when you guys are talking about wholeness versus the divide, like I'm not my body or my body is betraying me or my brain doesn't work because I'm, we lost tab. She will probably come back. Um, that that's, that's that division or that pain of like, 
I don't know how to be my whole self. I know how to split and I know how to dissociate and I know how to perform a certain uh, level of who I am at any moment in time, but I don't know how to be my whole, whole self. And, and that is one of the things that I love about EFT is the framework itself invites you into the mind body connection. It invites you into awareness of the subtle body, your energy body. It invites you into awareness of memory in your body because your memory isn't just in your brain. Your memory is also in your body. And so again, why it's so important to be using the mind and the body to help resolve trauma. So absolutely, I totally, yes, we've got to have them both. And so welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened, but here I am. Yeah. Did I miss um, anything important or did you all? Well, we were just, we, we just talked, uh, finished up where Beth had started again. And I should let Beth finish this, but um, just acknowledging the importance of knowing that your memories are not just encoded in your brain, they're in your body as well. And EFT as a framework into for people that have no idea, which most of us don't, we have no idea about how to access the body's memory. We have no idea how to, how to handle, handle our own emotions. So anyway, all topics for another discussion or for another um, uh, podcast. Um, I, I want to keep moving with the, in, the introduction to the basic recipe because it's a, yes. Yeah. Just one, one brief, like, so to, to bring it back as we've talked about in our podcast before what I was saying to, uh, to Krista, before, when we lost you was if, if we don't know how to be whole because splitting or dissociating or performing or hiding was the way that you coped with a dysfunctional childhood, or it's also essentially what the, what like the, the settler colonialist, like white supremacist world that we kind of live in is like, don't access your feelings because that's weakness. Work harder, buy more. Don't, don't be whole because then what if you aren't a good consumer anymore or you're not killing yourself at work. So beyond just what, how you wire yourself to split off, dissociate, disconnect kind of what we were, you were saying to have right before you lost, uh, we lost you is also, we live in a society that regularly perpetuates those messages of staying split off is the way to make it in this world. Yep. And, uh, that sucks. And it's wrong <laughs> and it's not working. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. Well, um, I think Beth, I just want to let you know that hamburger sandwich is something I made to help clinicians understand how EFT works. Right. Um, but Krista, I think it will be a great idea if you want to take us through the basic recipe because yeah. EFT has a really important component that if you're just going to tap your acupoints, it will help you, but it won't have the kind of impact that Krista is talking about because the neurological piece is crucial to the whole role. So Krista, would you mind walking us through those? Absolutely. All right. So um, the basic recipe is a simple um, framework for anybody to be able to use EFT. And what you're talking about, Tab, is um, remembering to work to stay specific but that's, that's maybe something for another day. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's talk about the basic recipe. You're, you're meaning that you can't do all the things at one you're, time. You've got to delay again. Focus, like a laser. Yes, yeah. yes. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. That's a little more advanced. Let's get the basics in. So first, before we go any further, let's learn the points. So um, starting with the side of the hand, and I'm going to have you guys follow along with me and anyone that's watching, please follow along. So it's right here on the side of the hand. Um, we call this the side of the hand point. It doesn't matter how hard or how soft that you're tapping. You notice that I'm just doing some gentle tapping. You can use all your hands. You can just apply pressure. You can miss points. You're not going to mess it up. So don't worry about it. Don't be intimidated. You can't hurt yourself. You. Some people do this. So any way that we're stimulating the side of the hand point. This um, point is a really great point for all of those really long-term 
neural pathways, hardcore core beliefs that you hold about yourself. It's a great, great point for reset. Um, Dawson Church, is, is, this is your point for reversal or dealing with massive reversal. Um, so side of the hand, from here we go to the very center of the top of your head. And you can use one hand, you can use both hands, it doesn't matter. Um, we go to, from here, we go to where the eyebrow meets the bridge of the nose. Bony ridge of the side of the eye. Under the eye. Under the nose. Under the mouth. Collarbone. So specifically with the collarbone, although most people are using four fingers, you're going to you're going to get the point. But if you want to know specifics, if you find the inside edge of your collarbone, you come out about an inch and down about an inch and a half. And if you palpitate around on those ribs, you're going to find a sore spot. And so that's your collarbone point. And then from here we go under the arm. So you find your underarm and you go down about four inches about where your bra strap is. And if you palpitate around on your ribs, you're gonna find another sore spot. And that's your under the arm point. There are other points. These are just not the points. Those other points were just not the ones used in the clinical trials, which by the way, thanks to Dawson Church, there have been bazillions of clinical trials around the efficacy of EFT and energy psychology practices and modalities. So if you wanna know the science, go to EFT Universe and I will have <clears throat> Beth and Tabby put some resources on there for you to get more detail if you would like it towards the end. Anyway, so let's move through the points one more time. The side of the hand. So from here, top of the head. Um, if you get on YouTube, some people go in an opposite direction. They start over the eye and end at the top of the head. Again, it doesn't really matter. Over the eye, side of the eye. Under the eye, under the nose, under the mouth, collarbone, and under the arm. <clears throat> In terms of resourcing, <laughs> The more you practice these modalities, the more you use them, it becomes a conditioned response. And I highly recommend you start cultivating you know, physical cues that create conditioned response. So in those moments when you're feeling triggered, you have easy access to something that anchors you into that soothed um, limbic system <clears throat> that cues you out of stress, that cues you back into your body so again, EFT is one of many ways to start resourcing, anchoring yourself, counter conditioning stress and anxiety. So those are your points. Those are the heads of nine Chinese meridians. Um, one of the sheets that Tab and Beth will provide for you is um, <clears throat> the basic recipe, which we're gonna go through today, which you can't really see, but it is written in great detail, all of the bits and pieces of the basic recipe that we're going to go through. And then the back side has all of the points um, and which meridians they're associated with, which emotions you're releasing, what are you bringing in? What are you making space for? And so <clears throat> you can spend a little more time on one point if that point is really resonating with how you're feeling. So um, we've learned the points and now here is what we call our setup statement, and we use the side of the hand point as we make our setup statement. So as I said earlier, it's a combination of exposure therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy coupled with the stimulation of acupressure points. So here's your exposure therapy piece. Even though you insert the problem. So even though I feel completely overwhelmed and I'm exhausted, even though I'm angry at my spouse, even though I'm 
want to wring my daughter's neck, even though whatever it is, even though I'm angry with my boss, even though I feel inadequate, whatever your problem is, even though I'm worried about this event in the future, this is your cognitive behavioral piece we're going to bring on here. And this is very, very important. So even though I have this problem, whatever it is, I deeply and completely accept myself. Huge right there. I accept how I feel. I acknowledge how I feel. There are any number of ways that you can meet the problem with some form of affirmation, some form of acknowledgement. Um, for some people, it is really hard to say, I love and accept myself. Some people can't say it. And in that case, if you can't say that with authenticity, then I you know, would recommend statements like, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm okay. Louise Hay, our queen, um, will say that if you can't say I completely love and accept myself, you might be able to insert something like, I'm willing to learn how to love and accept myself. So like, however far back you need to go from being it, or like, I'm willing to consider it's worth it to learn to love myself, that you can go to where you're, you're, you're willing versus like, yeah, I'm saying something that doesn't feel totally available. Yeah, I love that. Like, I'm trying my best. And even if someone's like, I can't, I can't say I'm trying my best. You, okay. Are you willing to, are you willing to consider that you might be trying your best? Like wherever someone is, we can meet them there. I love that. Yes. So we're meeting the problem with some form of affirmation. And the, the important piece with this is you're not going to get, you're not going to release or move through anything as long as you're in a state of resistance with it. How do we get out of a state of resistance? We accept how we feel. And, and that can be the statement alone, even though I'm overwhelmed with anger, I accept how I feel. Let's talk a little bit what about, about what a state of resistance is. Ah, because it's not necessarily something where you're over going. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, it could be overwhelm. Mm -hmm. it, yes. it could be rejecting of the idea because it feels too big or scary. What types of resistance have you seen Krista and Beth? <sighs> um, well, so I, when I use this, the term resistance, um, because it is a fairly broad term, it can all it can represent energetic resistance. I can't accept how I feel. I won't accept how I feel. So I have a statement that I love. What I resist persists. Because where I place my attention is where my energy goes. And love and acceptance is the platform for change. Mm -hmm. So we're really talking about a willingness to yes. accept the condition, yes. the state, the experience, whatever it is that you're working on. Right. And you, you don't resist your way through letting go. You relax your way through letting go. Yes. That's so well said. Does that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Beth, did you want to say something? Yeah. So in my experience with what resistance looks like, um, I think one of the things that can be so disturbing for our clients who have complex post-traumatic stress is that there are parts of them that they don't understand. So they have come to you and they're saying, I'm willing, why else would I be here? Why else would I be paying my good money and spending my time doing this? But the deeply rooted core beliefs that are so foundational when it comes to um, complex stress, complex and chronic stress and trauma um, control, uh, I can't relax, I can't release control. The only way I know how to solve problems is by grinding into them, right? That's one. Uh, and I think that perfectionism and control are kind of like the, the shadow sides of each other. Um, but perfectionism is of course sponsored by shame because if you are, if you are not okay with who you are, you always have to change. You've got to change. And then I think the one that I see that's I've mentioned before in our podcast, that's so painful, both for the client and for you, the practitioner who's trying to support them is despair. It feels so real that either they can't get better because uh, they're fundamentally flawed. And the best life is going to get is that they're going to be able to just like pretend like everything's all right. That's as good as life gets or um, despair that like, what if I get better and nothing, nothing improves? What if I do heal? And then like, 
I have to lose all my relationships, lose all my friends, lose my job, lose my relationship because I start like, it's almost like if I, if I get better, I have too much to lose. And those are so unconscious. So when we say resistance and somebody goes, I drove myself here and I already paid you. What are you talking about? More like the unconscious, deeper parts of you that are so afraid or so despairing that a world in which you are radiantly whole and healed either seems impossible or not available to you or utterly terrifying because of how unknown it is. Oh, makes me sad. I know it. Well, we've got about 15 minutes left. So I'm thinking, oh, okay. I know I'm, quite fast. So. I'm charging forward. Okay. But because I really want to talk about resourcing with you, Krista. Yes. All right, go forward, hit it. Okay, moving forward. So we acknowledge the problem, we expose the problem, and we meet the problem with some form of affirmation or acceptance, whatever that looks like for you. And as we, we, as we say this um, setup statement a couple of times, we ask, so we say the setup statement technically three times. After I've gone through it twice with a client, we ask two questions on a scale of zero to 10, how much is the problem bothering you? Zero, it doesn't bother me at all. 10, it bothers me to the max. So that point of reference is for you, the coach, or me, the coach, and you, the client, okay? So it gives us a starting point, and the goal is to take <clears throat> wherever we start from and bring you down to between a zero, one, two, three, somewhere around there, so that you're feeling better, okay? So the other question, and this question is so important and my favorite question, where, when I think of this problem, where do I feel it in my body? Do I feel it as a tightness in my chest? Do I feel it as a knot in my stomach? Do I feel it as the weight of the world on my shoulders? Does it have a color? Does it have a shape? Okay. <clears throat> so we're beginning, we're inviting the client to begin to identify where the body is feeling the memory. <clears throat> so we say the setup statement three times. We find out our suds, our subjective units of distress. We give it a number and we identify where we feel it in the body. From there, we move through the rest of the points using what we call reminder phrases. And the purpose of the reminder phrases are simply to keep you focused on the problem. Now, some people will say, why are we focusing on the problem? We should be focusing on the positive, right? Well, yeah, there's a time and place for that. We're going to make more headway if we learn how to acknowledge how we feel um, and meet. So if you stay anchored on that problem while you're meeting it with that soothed um, limbic brain, you're then giving permission for your brain to start assigning new meaning or reframing the problem, which is the whole point of all of this. Okay. It is allowing movement. So we, when we start seeing numbers come down, suds are coming down from five to a four, which we'll check. So we, we give it, uh, we find out where we feel it in the body. We give it a number. We start moving through the points, all this anger, I'm so angry, all this anger. We stay focused as we move through the points. We were a five when we started, now we're a three. Oh, and by the way, it started out as an angry red ball in my stomach. And after a round of tapping, ooh, it feels pink and it's lighter. And maybe it's moved up into my chest. And what we're looking for with the body <clears throat> is we're looking for change. That's an indicator of energetic movement. All we're looking for is change in how it's presenting itself. So we're inviting per a person into awareness of their body's memory and awareness of movement in their body, movement of energy. And usually there's a correlation with how the person is feeling when they think about it. That how are we doing that's Does been that my experience. Sense? Yeah. And that yeah. movement in the body is something that can anchor you into understanding that something is happening. Yes. Which is exactly. a reinforcement, right? Right. And I think I'm wondering, do you have more to talk about with this right now, Krista, or should we move into resourcing? Because that awareness of the movement is a resource. Absolutely. And <clears throat> Let me think about that for a minute. Okay. Uh, so the goal is to take your suds, your stress level from wherever it starts down to 
a more neutral zone. Um, and again, inviting awareness of the body and inviting um, awareness of that movement. And in doing that, you are cultivating resourcing. You're learning that you're able to regulate yourself out of stressful thoughts or feelings, memories, which is key, which is a great lead in for talking more specifically about resourcing and these modalities in terms of helping people learn how to resource because it is a cultivated skill. It's not something that you have just like that. So you're right. It's definitely a muscle to build. And um, Beth, do you want to talk a little bit about resourcing or should I lead in with that? Of course, I want to talk about resourcing you do. more than anything. Uh, so Krista, last time we met, we were using, we were talking about the adaptive integrative processing model, which EFT fits right in. So this idea that when we are stuck with um, stuck memories or stuck traumas in the body, mm -hmm. um, the, the best we know how to do to cope with that until we desensitize and reprocess it is to avoid it. So we find ourselves, you know, uh, you, you want to tell your partner how you really feel and then your throat closes up and is like, are you kidding? You can't do that. So that the brain or that the body will hijack you and whisk you away from the things that might be for your highest health and healing because you're not resourced enough to feel safe enough to use those higher order parts of your brain. And so in EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which uses bilateral stimulation. So every time I hear someone say that there's a tapping or there's a moving, there's like a body component, I think to myself, this is all the same stuff. Um, but the idea in, in resourcing for me, hearing you talk about it from the, the EFT perspective, you use your own functional and adaptive brain usually in your left hemisphere to help desensitize and reprocess what are the stuck traumatic events or core beliefs that are in your right temporal lobe. And so in resourcing in EMDR, um, especially EMDR for like attachment issues, early childhood trauma, um, you actually have to tap in nurturing figures or tap in protective figures, tap in spirituality and wisdom, because without which we say, can you be compassionate to yourself? And someone's like me, I'm a piece of garbage. Are you kidding? The only way I can get myself to do anything is by like really, really beating up on myself. Shame is the only thing I know how to use to change. And so even just imagining that what you feel is an angry red ball in your body somewhere is, I think about like foundational for self-compassion because it just becomes a part of you instead of something that you're angrily fighting to resist. So what you were saying before, like what we resist persists um, and that self-compassion is a muscle in the same way that like lighting up a neural pathway and practicing lighting up and potentiating that neural pathway is like strengthening a muscle. You go to the gym, you pick up the 20 pound dumbbells. They don't ever get any lighter, but the practice by which you engage in the behavior to lift them makes it feel on and on that it's easier for you to move them. The last thing I'll say as it relates to resourcing is internal family systems, um, is, is a lot of imagination. You're imagining that there are protector parts that are the ones that are fighting you on like whole health and healing or letting your grief come up, whatever. And, you know, sometimes my clients protector parts seem like these really vicious aggressors. And then you get a little closer and that like jerky uh, gorilla that always like makes you explode in anger whenever you're actually just feeling embarrassed. Uh, if you can imagine him going to the coffee shop and trying to ask his crush out, you know, and like fumbling with the straw and like feeling really embarrassed, then all of a sudden you can like have a real sense of tenderness for that part of you instead of being like, I am a failure. I am shame. I am. And so when we're separating and then like looking at something with just a little bit more neutrality, it's my experience that that's enormously resourcing as well. Um. I think we underestimate the power of, well, and, and one of the things that I, when I work with new clients is 
defining the autonomic nervous system and fight flight versus parasympathetic. And it's amazing just, you know, using these tools and manually inviting people out of that stress state, the accessibility they gain to their own inner guidance, which is absolutely necessary. And so again, nervous system is the, the key into resourcing, shifting, healing. And amazing things happen just inviting people out of that stress state. They're amazed at their own ability to solve problems and overcome something that has felt overwhelming. Absolutely true, Chris. I really agree with what you just said. And I want to encourage you as a listener out there to remember as you're starting to resource yourself and build these resources within yourself, you have programming to stop you from doing that. And so one of the resources you're going to want to figure out is how to have kindness, even when it's not working the way you think it should, even when it's not meeting your expectations. So just be mindful of that. And I also wanted to say the end result of all of these therapies that we're talking about and interventions is that you're going to have the memory of your event or that experience But what ends up happening is that there's distance between you and that experience. And so it feels like memory, not like it's happening right now. And that in itself is another resource because you're giving yourself the space and capacity to make further changes. So the point that I'm making here is keep going. Even if it's hard, it's worth it. And there's lots of support. Right. And that's another resource. We also have resourcing outside of ourselves, which I will save that conversation for later. But there are things for you to access that can help this process. Mm -hmm. So don't forget those resources either. Mm -hmm. Krista and Beth, I just wanted to check back in with you because we're coming up on our our time and um, wanted to say, are there any last minute items that you wanted to talk about? Um, And let's do that now. Um, I wanted to just talk briefly about resources that are available. I don't know if this is where you want to do that. Okay. Perfect. So you just got, all you folks watching, just got a really fast (laughs) introduction to EFT and just a snippet of what it can do. There are so many ways to use it. Um, You can use it for affirmation. You can, you can use it for any number of things. Um, There are amazing resources available for you out there. Again, I mentioned EFT Universe. They have a website with all the science you could ever want on EFT and how it works, as well as how to do it. Um, And um, I haven't been to the website in a long time. I don't know if they have guided tapping meditations there, but go check it out. uh, the tapping solution.com the Ortners have done a wonderful job bringing EFT to the general population and they have a very well put together um, website as well as guiding tapping meditations and apps and all kinds of things. Um, YouTube has uh, Brad Yates uh, among all of these other people that I'm talking about. Um, Brad Yates is another one of my favorites to refer to my clients. He has guided tapping meditations on just about anything that you can imagine, Um, thousands of them. And um, when or if you choose to access these guided tapping meditations, know that even if his words don't exactly, you know, resemble how you feel, you can inject your own words and your own feelings. But listening to other people using it helps to grow your ability and how to use it. So there are some great resources. And in terms of working with, you know, so you can work with a coach like myself. Um, EFT Universe has a a site called The Tapping Place, where they have certified practitioners online all the time. So if you're in a crisis, you can jump on The Tapping Place and tap with a certified practitioner. So that is a great resource. You can look up both EFT Universe and and tappingsolution.com have lists of practitioners, certified practitioners in your area. Um, And from a coach's perspective, if you and when you pursue help with your trauma, and, and from my perspective, any kind of therapy, 
is going to better serve you if the therapist is using modalities like EMDR, EFT, mindfulness practices, brain spotting, the list goes on. So I am a huge advocate for any of these modalities, finding therapists that are using them. And I love collaborating with therapists. I'm really great at this tool and helping you to grow your ability to resource. You may have trauma that's outside of my scope of practice. I want you to see the therapist who also practices these modalities. And we work together. Fantastic, Krista. And I'll tell you what, I just learned something about the crisis tapping line. I'm going to be using the heck out of that with my clients and maybe myself on some days. <laughs> That's, right. Did you have anything you wanted to put in? Yes, yes, yes. Um, one of the things that is just kind of unprecedented in the world we live in right now is the, um, the arising of long COVID and having a loved one myself who has it and who is young and, you know, excellent at their job, but who is essentially experiencing like the way that you described feeling like your body is betraying you. Like you don't know what your brain is going to show up like on any given day, or like you think you're, it almost makes me, it reminds me of like post concussion syndrome or like having a TBI. And then like, you think, you know, what your mind is going to do for you. And then you try to go take a jog and you're disoriented, nauseated and have to stop jogging. Can you very briefly, um, especially for all those people who Tab and I have, have before made like light references to trauma and susceptibility to autoimmune disorders. Um, but also if you're someone who's out there who has an autoimmune disorder or who has long COVID, we're not saying you have to also have X, Y, and Z, but in brief, I know we're short on time, but in brief, um, I, I want to say what, what I do know about, um, autoimmune disorders. And then I'd be really interested to hear how, how tapping helps. What we always, what we know is that stress exacerbates autoimmune disorders and things like long COVID. And there's to me, nothing more stressing and more distressing than having a voice inside your head. That's telling you that you're failing because you can't put in eight hours of work at your job, or that's telling you that your body is um, betraying you like that internal monologue is actually activating your threat response. And it's in the absence of any threat outside of you. Um, so yeah, if, if you will, Krista, just speak a little bit on what you know about autoimmune and, and tapping. Absolutely. So, um, you can go into fight or flight on thought alone. All of those negative feelings you were just describing are putting you into a state of fight or flight. Stress is a huge contributor to autoimmune disorder. A, an interesting side note. So I have been, you know, just charging towards my own healing, learning and re-experiencing my life in a completely different way. And over time, and I was happy just feeling better, knowing the things that I knew, but what is happening to my body over time is I'm healing. I'm requiring less and less medication. I am no longer in range for autoimmune when they do my labs. My, my naturopath, you know, I've been over the last year, lowering, 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 lowering my medication and my levels are staying really high, too high. And her comment was, whatever you're doing, she said, it's really remarkable. And whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And so addressing stress, addressing limiting beliefs, addressing toxic beliefs about yourself, addressing your life and the parts of your life that are causing stress, whether they're from a traumatic childhood or an abusive relationship or toxic thoughts about yourself, whatever those are doing the work to address what you think and how you feel about yourself and relieving those layers of stress are hugely important in terms of healing chronic illness, hugely important. Um, and I've also will say I have had COVID and I was concerned coming out of COVID because I felt so foggy and lethargic. I wondered how am I gonna do this? I need my brain to do this work. 
I've got to be on, right? And I was worried and I went back to work and I realized after a few days of working with clients and I'm spending hours every day tapping, I'm like, I'm feeling better. And I know that much of this fog that I'm living in is energetic. And so I got my happy little Tukas over to my sister-in-law who happens to be an acupuncturist. And we went to work also helping my body to heal from the physical stress of COVID. And I'm happy to say I've made a full recovery. And so the definitely the connection between the, the terrain of your thoughts, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your body, how you feel about circumstances in life is having a very direct and powerful impact on your health, whether it's a chronic illness or recovering from COVID. Did that answer your question? It did. And I just, I want to chime in there that that energetic part that you're talking about could also be systemic, especially when we're mm -hmm. thinking about COVID. I mean, some of that might be the beliefs of other people about what you should do about COVID, what it means if you don't wear a mask, the list goes on, <laughs> right? So be aware that not all of your thoughts and your core beliefs are coming directly from you. Sometimes it's from within the system we live in. And I am getting high approval from Beth on that. Do you want to add in Beth? <laughs> no, it just makes me mad. Um, the, 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 only, the last thing I want to say, um, and I'll, I'll keep it very brief. I love hearing that there is a lot of research that shows the clinical efficacy of any intervention because I am like bored with the way someone recently was like, yeah, I recommended you to someone else. And I was like, she's a little woo woo, a little bit crunchy. And I was like, no girl, I follow the science. Like, that's not true. Those are your definitions of what mind body practices are. They're not mine. Like that if there's research that shows that EFT is effective for diminishing your distress and like re, uh, rewiring your brain and like soothing your nervous system, if somebody's like, yeah, that stuff's kind of like hippy dippy, it's kind of woo woo, hit that person with the science, the science, which is just study of something to figure out how it works. It isn't like some sort of big factual juggernaut it is also ever changing so that the more that we have the power and the capacity to conduct research on quote unquote energy healing the research is continuing to show that it's really effective so don't let that western part of your mind that kind of right wrong black white uh, good, bad kind of thinking, be like, well, somebody told me that that's not real therapy, but like Sigmund Freud and his cocaine problem is. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yeah. frankly, how can some, regardless of the, the science and the research, which I'm hundred percent with you, how can something be woo woo when most of us can tap into it? it's just not the way we usually do it in this, you know, country, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. Krista, I want to give you one last opportunity to say anything you might want to say. Um, please tell us your website, how people can get in contact with you if they want to. And we'll also put that up on our page and on the YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you. Um, you can find me at kristadawson.com. It's easy. Uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-D-A-W-S-O-N. Um, they will put it up on their website. Um, I am growing my business, so I'm hoping very soon that you will see me on YouTube as well with guided meditations, guided tapping meditations, a lot of other things. So um, there's a fleet of us out there that are trained. This is an incredible modality, um, and you don't have to have huge problems to make it very useful for you. So I encourage anyone who's even remotely interested to, to check it out. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing resource. So you can find me at kristadawson.com. And again, thank you so much for sharing my passion and letting me share my passion with your passion <laughs> about these modalities and helping people to heal and overcome overwhelming life circumstances.
and living well, a happier, better life because that's what we're here to do. Yes, is it live is. Live in a state of well being. Most of us have no idea how to do it. So these are tools to help you in. Let's get there. Let's get there. Krista, thank you so much for being with us today, for all that you've contributed. We really appreciate it. And uh, I have a sneaking suspicion we'll be talking with you again in the future. Yes, I hope so. Thank you. Um, please go ahead and like or subscribe if this is something that resonates with you. We do like to get information about other things you might like to hear about, topics, issues that come up for you. Uh, please feel free to go to our website, the cptsdpodcast.com and look at any of those resources. We're building the page. So if you go there right when you hear this, you'll probably only see Krista's items, but we will kick it up a notch and get other links on there for you, especially for our past guests, because you might want to be able to ref reference them. Um, and go check out this particular podcast on YouTube, because it will be very helpful for you to get a feel for how the movement works with EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Krista. Bye. Thank you.